So uh, we will see this uh, particular thing in Marix, uh, as we were discussing earlier also. Uh, this thing, uh, this Myrex project actually, uh, how these all these things started, it was like in the 2005 there was a project called, called TASTE, which I have already discussed also, which was for the recommendation purpose only. That project was an open source one and then when Mahmood came in the 2008, the TASTE was actually uh, migrated to the Mahmood one only. Then from 2011, this Myrex uh, again started as a separate project and became an uh, independent Apache project you know, uh, uh, as a for the recommendation only and it was just considering only the recommendation systems and as you can see it, it is again evolved from the Apache mode only and uh, it was providing you uh, one more additional feature like uh, REST APIs. So using the REST APIs also uh, you can uh, whatever recommendation system you are uh, creating, you can use REST APIs to call that. And down the line, it was also using the Hadoop for the scalability. Now, what happened in the 2013 uh, with the new developments and all, Cloudera actually got this merits. And you will be surprised to know that when once we started the class before, be, uh, before uh, uh, I think one week, one week before, the site also is not available now. If you can see now, uh, till the uh, one week before when we started, the site was available. You can download um, the Myrix things and uh, you would be able to, you know, doing the things and all. But now if you will see, the site is completely off. The reason is, it is bought by Cloudera and then this Oryx project has been started. And all the content is there. So now the existing one over using, uh, on the site also if you will see, uh, I will give you a link. It is said that migrate to the Oryx one. So that's why it is now, uh, even if you would like to try it out, it is not available. You cannot download and all. Maybe in the Google search and all you can find out the ZAR files and all. But uh, I would say it would be more difficult. So if you wanted to try out this thing, we will have to construct it on the Oryx side. Now, uh, uh, going forward, what is the uh, Oryx one? So if you will see, this Oryx is an open source project. It also provides this, uh, uh, you know, real-time large-scale machine learning and predictive analytics infrastructure. Now the question is, when Oryx came from the Myrex, uh, our, uh, our thinking would be that like uh, this will only take care for the recommendation systems. But what Cloudera did, Cloudera was also working on the machine learning algorithms. So what those guys did, they included those other clust uh, like clustering and classification algorithm also into this problem. So now this project is as of now it is an alpha state means there is a box in the APIs and all as of now but you can still go ahead and use and it is not only having this recommendation system but it is also having classification clustering algorithm also. And uh, now the thing is, uh, as I was telling you that we will not cover in detail, why we will not cover in detail this thing? Because it is actually, you can say it's a, it's a project which is equivalent to the mount as of now. And or I would say it is like uh, like uh, Apache Hadoop, if you remember, Apache Hadoop was an open source one, open source framework. And then there is a Cloudera Hadoop, Hadoop Intel Hadoop and other uh, companies also providing the distribution for that Hadoop. Same way if you will see Mahout was the open source and Oryx will also have all the algorithms and all but it would be I think in the near future it would be like a licensed one and uh, there would be more support it would not be a open source type but from the Cloudera help you can use it. So that's why I was saying that uh, we are not going to cover in more detail because it's like you know uh, altogether a different product. Now what the Oryx provide as I told you it provides the recommendation system, classification and clustering. It also provides the same concept of the HTTP REST API which was there in the Amerix. It is a two-tier design. It is having the computational layer. Okay, Kaushik says what are the advantages of having REST APIs. Okay, Kaushik, if you remember this uh, web services concepts and all. So uh, the thing is, uh, in that concept, what is the beauty of that concept is you will uh, create your own software and all and you will register as a 
software service, then us can also use that thing based on the URL amount. Same way, here also let's say you are creating a recommendation system. You can call that recommendation system with a REST API. So you can integrate that particular recommendation system which is separately developed to any other application also. And that application need not to be a Java one. It could be a .NET one or other programming language also. So that's why it is uh, like in simple Java world also, this uh, APIs like REST APIs and all, uh, that is a benefit which it provides. Okay, so uh, again means um, what I was saying, this is a um, two-tier um, uh, architecture, it is having a computational layer and a serving layer. The same concept was there in the merits also, computational layer and a serving layer. And it, it implements a lambda architecture. Lambda architecture itself is a you know different topic, but um, to be high level overview, what it does, it will having a batch layer, a serving layer, and a real time layer. So your new data first will go to the batch layer, and from there it will go to the batch layer and real time layer, and from batch layer it will go to the serving layer, and then uh, on based on the processing and all, um, your query can come out from the serving layer as well as from the real time layer. So that is uh, about the lambda architecture. Now. It also provides uh, uh, one more important thing, this models which we are creating like you know we saw in the classification and all we will create the models for the system classification algorithms. So models it provides in the PMML format. Okay, And this PMML is uh, called predictive model markup language. It is equivalent to the XML one but it is like you know exchangeable means you can create a model and uh, use it. Uh, on a different programs also. So that is the additional thing which it provides. So if you will say it is not a library visualization tool or analytical tool or environment, it is just a, a representation of continu continuation of the merits and cloud era of machine learning projects. So they combined it this one and it's a, as of now it is in an alpha, alpha state, that means bugs would be there. And I think uh, slowly as they are working, I think till this year end, idea is they will come up with the beta releases which means uh, once you will install the cloud data distribution this thing will also be there by default. That's the plan. So uh, we will uh, see about this uh, architecture if you will see. This is like a you know serving layer client and there would be there could be many serving layers here. And same way it also uses for the scalability it also uses the Hadoop and SDFS so input files uh, would be in the SDFS and then computational layer will take up uh, those files from the SDFS and it can also run the map reduce things and then com uh, this computational layer and both the serving layers will be uh, binded by a config file. So for or, or once you will install the Oryx and if you want to try it out there would be oryx.config file which you will have to configure for the input file location, for the output file location, for your model location and all those things. And uh, once you will set up then only you can run this um, computational layer and serving layers. 